to Mike. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to day two of the third annual West Virginia Game Developers Expo. Uh, this morning, we have with us Brad Kalinowski. Uh, Brad lives in Atlanta, Georgia, but he's originally a Huntington native. Um, there's a whole lot I could say about Brad. I'm really glad that he was able to come today and, and deliver this keynote for us. And I'm going to hand it over to him, and he's going to tell you all kinds of wonderful things that he does in the visual effects industry. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Everybody had their coffee? I don't think so. No? OK. Me neither. Um, so I'll part, first, I want to say um, thanks for Josh and everybody for inviting me. I really appreciate this. This is cool. And uh, I hope you guys can get out, you know, get something out of this. Um, I'm not in the, the video game world, but I was at one time. Uh, and I'll get into that. Uh, so you know, you'll see that this all kind of melds together. Um, so anyway, uh, like you said, I'm originally from Huntington. Uh, I lived here from the time I was like 14 to the time I was 31. Um, my first uh, career job, uh, or 10 years of, of my career, was working at a hospital as a nurse. But I always wanted to get into film and, and uh, you know, video games and whatever it may be. Um, you know, because I just want to be in the entertainment industry. That's that's how I felt like. Uh, you know, that's where my calling was. So, uh, long. I mean, you know, my my story is really long, and and uh, it could literally bore you or make you happy. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, long story short, after meeting a few people here, uh, one being Joe Barta, he'd just come back from uh, being in Los Angeles, California. Uh, working for 20th Century Fox and and uh, and and Paramount and people <laughs> like that, uh, just doing a lot of grip work and and that kind of thing. And then another gentleman that I got introduced through Joe Barta was John Wallace III, uh, which actually moved back from London, and he was working with uh, Christopher Tucker, uh, which is a makeup artist that did all the makeup f effects for um, the original Star Wars Cantina, uh, Cantina scenes. Um, so anyway. Um, after meeting these gentlemen and then, you know, working kind of uh, moonlighting as I was uh, working at the hospital, a moonlight. What I what I would do is I would, uh, you know, I would I would moonlight with these guys, shooting commercials, creating commercials, and John and I had actually opened up a uh, little production company where we would create um, 3D graphics for you know similar commercials around this area. Um, just locally, but that was a start, you know. Um, there wasn't really, you know, back then uh, there really wasn't a school like this, you know, where you could go and learn how to do visual effects or even create video games, other than going to school and 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 having to take a computer science class and some art classes and that kind of thing, um, which really didn't concentrate on visual effects or how to create them, how to how to do it, and so. Uh, we basically learned on our own, taught ourselves, and um, one of the things that that um, that uh, you know had started back in 1996 uh, was the internet and Amazon.com. Um, as I was working at the hospital, my wife saw just exactly how bored I was with you know uh, working in that career and having that career, and she said. She said to me, she said, if you hate your job, quit. And I was like, well, okay, all right. Uh, after 10 years, you know, <laughs> being there, it scared the hell out of me. Um, but anyway, what I did was I quit. And with the resources I could get from all the books and stuff that I could order from Amazon, I basically taught myself how to do visual effects and, um, and uh, plus taking art classes and stuff over the years learning uh, color, learning shadows, you know, how light reacts to, to colors and how it bounces off the walls and stuff. And, and then also teaching myself, you know, 3D. Uh, when those two came together, then that, that pretty much opened up a door for me to say, okay, maybe I can actually do this as a career. You know, maybe I can create video games. Maybe I can go to Hollywood and, and try to do, uh, you know, get into visual effects and, and create film, you know, motion pictures and features that you guys want to watch. And, cry or, or get scared to death with. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, I'm trying to condense all this. Uh, after spending about six months on my computer at home, uh, living off of uh, 
welfare, basically. Um, I, dis, I, I created a, a demo reel. And with this demo reel, uh, after learning all the software, and, and the software back then was mainly 3D Studio Max, and you had Softimage, um, Photoshop, and you know that's pretty much it. That was that was just all there was. And so uh, after teaching myself how to do all of that um, and creating these demo reels on VHS tape, yeah, um, <laughs> it was a long, tedious process. Trust me. Uh, you know, I sent it out to a bunch of studios in Hollywood, and I got one call back. And that call said, hey, if you can make it out here, we'd love to hire you. I said, okay, cool. So it's very cliche. You know, I, I basically sold or gave away everything that I owned, my wife and I did, and we packed my car to the brim. Um, <laughs> this 1996 Cavalier is what I had, so you can imagine there wasn't much in there other than clothing. But anyway. Drove across the country, got to Albuquerque, New Mexico after two and a half days, exhausted, and said, you know, said, I better call these, I better call this company and say, I'm still out a day, so, you know, at least, so I'll be there around 3 p.m. or something. And I, you know, and, and uh, I thought everything was going to be cool. Uh, basically, what, they, what happened was I, I got to Albuquerque, got in the hotel, gave them a call, tell them that I was out about, you know, the, another day. And they said, can you hold, please? And I was like, mm, OK. My wife could see that suddenly fear of God just went across my face. <laughs> and after about 10 minutes, they came back and they said, um, you know, we're sorry, uh, Mr. Konolowski, but that job's been filled. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, OK. <laughs> so my wife immediately just went white and, um, and said, um, what's going on and, they, and then you know I tried to find out more details about what it is and why they had given the job to somebody else after already telling me that I was I had the job basically what happened they gave the job to a producer's son so here it was in Albuquerque New Mexico um, without a job going to Hollywood California where it's you know you when I back then I was paying I think four hundred dollars a month or four hundred fifty dollars a month for a, a, be, a one bedroom apartment out there it was $1,250 a month, you know. So immediately I started to freak out. But we, luckily enough, my wife's cousin, John, the guy I had started the business with, or the, the little production company here, he would actually went out a year ahead and landed a job with um, uh, this little show called The Simpsons. And so he had a, an apartment, one bedroom apartment, and so we all stayed there for a little bit. During this time, I you know, I didn't have a job, I was freaking out. I had some more videotapes, um, VHS. And I was toting them around for about two weeks, going to various companies. Um, landed a job at a company called Boss Films. And, uh, I la and, and basically, I'm trying to condense all this so I can get to more stuff, but basically that job also, I interviewed on a Thursday and they closed shop on, and went out of business on Friday. <laughs> yes. So, I'm like, okay, maybe the medical field isn't so bad, um, you know. So, um, so, you know, I, I I was a little bit depressed and bummed out. You can you can probably say a little bit, um, but you know, I wasn't going to let it deter me. So I hit the road again, you know, and and literally in two weeks' time, I found another job, and that first job was. Um, I got hired by the same woman who, her name was Antoinette, and she uh, was a, actually the head of Boss Films. And uh, she actually took another job just right after that. And luckily enough, I interviewed with her at this new company that had just formed in Hollywood. And uh, she said, when can you start? And I was like, well, anytime." She said, well, we don't have a building yet. We're going to pay you to sit at your home for two, two months. I was like, hey, whatever. So I sat for two months, and then finally once they got the building done and the room done and everything, I went in, and my first job was um, creating, <coughs> sorry, can't see. My first job was creating, good, I was thinking, oh no, it's not gonna work. My first job was creating 
facial or research and development for facial motion capture. It was new, it was completely, nobody was doing it. Industrial Light and Magic was trying to create it. Um, all these companies were creating it because the show that I was working on was going to be the very first movie really to have facial motion capture fully realistic, you know. Uh, and the name of the, the film that they were going to make was the remake of The Incredible Mr. Limpet. Uh, it was an old Don Knotts film from way back in the 60s. And it was going to star Jim Carrey. So I worked with Jim Carrey for two years on creating and trying to create this facial motion capture software that they were going to use for this film. Um, one of the things that uh, was actually new then was HD cameras and we used uh, the HD cameras themselves were you know the size of a refrigerator. Um, they were not you can't carry them around so that was one of the problems we had to figure out. But anyway uh, so my first job was creating this, and I'll show you, uh, let me show you the first one. This was created in 1998, 99, uh, and basically it covers, it, it's everything that went into, uh, uh, the software was used on Star Wars for Jar Jar Binks, it was used on um, Lord of the Rings for the Trolls and um, any other of the creatures. Um, it also went on to be used in Spider-Man for the Sandman uh, and a number of other, other, a lot of other shows um, out there. I didn't see any residuals, so. But anyway, here's the, here's the first test that we did in 1990, uh, 1996. Okay, so, that, so I made that 1996 um, with a group of people. About, we, there's about 10 of us. And um, we developed that software. Uh, specifically for the Jim Carrey movie, but it got canned after about uh, two years and not a foot of film got shot. Uh, $20 million out the, out the window. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but it led on to other things, you know. Um, uh, okay, where am I going with this? Okay. Um, so yeah, after getting that job and helping develop that software and everything, I later on, you know, the, the company itself, it went through the whole dot-com boom and everything and they lost all their money and then they closed shop and I went on to being, uh, I went on, I just moved on into another company, the same company called Pacific Title Mirage and started compositing. And from there, that led to a lot of other things. Uh, me being where I am today, I've been compositing and uh, a visual effects supervisor for going on almost 22 years. Uh, I've worked on 93 films, um, 97 actually. Uh, yeah, 97 films total now. Um, some are not even listed, so I'm up to 100 films. Uh, features and television shows. Um, and what my main role is, is uh, you know, now I used to composite. I used to take everything, and I used to do 3D also. Um, and I, you know, I would just basically create the, the overall uh, whatever they needed, you know, if it was a creature, if it was uh, a building, if it was, uh, you know, blowing up uh, cars and tanks and, and a person, and believe me, I've done everything, um, creating certain body parts that I can't show you. Um, I'm not kidding. Um, so, yeah. Um, Yeah, so one of the things uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of is touch on is that that even though um, I'm a visual effects supervisor uh, and I don't really deal with video games a lot, although when there was a writer strike one time in Hollywood, I, you know, it lasted for about six months, and I had to kind of figure out what I was going to do. And what I did was um, I had this friend call me up and said he was also a visual effects. Uh, artist along with me and he said, hey, um, by the way, I got this, this job, you want to come over and interview for it? And I was like, yeah, cool. So they just gave me the address, I had no idea where I was going. It was over in Santa Monica, went over there and when I pulled up it was Activision. <laughs> yeah. So my first job in the video game industry world, and only job actually, was working for Activision on uh, the return of Castle Wolfenstein. Um, and um, that ended up being really fantastic 
But the thing about it was, was what I was realizing as I was, you know, the video game world and the film industry basically had never tried to work together. You know, it's kind of like uh, in the FBI and the CIA. They didn't, you know, they just didn't want to work together. So what I what I found out was that that the um, the two worlds. After I got, you know, I only stayed at Activision for a little bit, creating video games uh, and working on video games. Uh, it was a very short stint, honestly. And then I went back to the film industry. And when I, but when I did that, I realized that there was a lot of tools that they were using that we could actually implement into the film industry. Um, and so that led my a little bit of my career of trying to do that as a, as, as a visual effects supervisor, trying to take tools that were in the video game world and, and use them in real time at, you know, at the point when, when technology could get there and using those in real time to create things that we, that we were taking you know, weeks and months to create. I mean, that, that render right there you just saw in 1996 took about $5 million <laughs> worth of machines uh, that, it's a, that filled this room, literally. And you know, they were rendering for weeks and um, just to create that little whatever, I think it was like a minute. Um, that's one reason why it didn't get made. But anyway, um, over time, the video game world has gotten closer to the highest resolution that we work in, which is, you know, four, well, it was 4K, now it's 6K images. The tools that they use are pretty much exactly the same tools we use in, in Hollywood to create all the, all the visions that you know, we put up on the screen. Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, so some of the stuff that you see now uh, that, was, uh, that, uh, that I've been doing over the past four or five years is using like, for example, the Unreal Engine. I use the Unreal Engine for this television show called Librarians. And in the Librarians, uh, they had this, this uh, particle generator that was, or particle, yeah, whatever, I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, but anyway, they had this uh, uh, huge machine that was behind them and, and we wanted to see it in real time. The director and producer, his name is Dean Devlin. Uh, he, if you don't know who Dean Devlin is, he's a producer, executive producer, director for, uh, and has created and wrote uh, Godzilla and uh, Stargate, the original Stargate, um, and Independence Day 1 and 2, and a whole bunch <laughs> of other movies. But anyway, he had this little TV show called The Librarians on TNT, and they wanted to create this, this uh, he wanted to see, he's all about technology, so he wanted to see this, this stuff in real time. So we took the Unreal Engine and built that, and then um, superimposed that over everything that was going on from the cameras that we were getting from set, to, so, to show just exactly where it was going to be and how big it was and, and that kind of thing. So that was one of our first, you know, one of my first kind of uh, uses of un the Unreal Engine in, in that. Um, let's see here. Uh, anyway, I'll show you, let me show you just a demo reel of, um, from our company that I'm currently working with in, in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Crafty Apes is a, a company that just opened up about six years ago and that I joined uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, we've been dabbling along with not only just creating visual effects, but dabbling in using the Unreal Engine for, for some of the visual effects that we use. And um, let me show you just our demo reel about what we've done, what we created, and then I'll continue my rambling. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, basically, uh, that's just a little bit of the work that we've, we've got like 14 shows that we're doing right now. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm kind of like discombobulated because I've been working on two shows for the past week and I flew here yesterday and passed out. <laughs> so I'm unprepared, basically. Um, anyway, uh, so a lot of the things we did I, I can't tell you every single thing that we did or used Unreal Engine in, or, or if we even did. But my point to saying this and to keep saying that we, we use Unreal Engine is basically to say the two worlds 
if you don't if you don't get a job in the video game industry, then your other option is to become a visual effects artist. And visual effects artists are anything from, you know, using uh, <coughs> Maya, you know, to create your your you know your designs, uh, you know, your um, creatures or whatever it may be, uh, lighting. Uh, Particles, uh, you know, Photoshop work for textures, and you name it. Everything that's going on in the video game world is also going on in the film world, and it's it's kind of easy uh, to kind of go over as long as you understand the, you know, the limitations of film and the limitations of video games and how that both cross over. You know, how they cross over, how those limitations cross over. So I mean, your options to go into the film industry once you graduate, it's always there. It's open. Uh, and you can, you know, create stuff like that. Um, um, yeah, so uh, that's, you know, for when I was when I was living here, you know, I did a lot of. Uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunities to do this kind of thing, and and basically, I just took a chance. You know, I took a huge chance on just going out to Hollywood. So I highly recommend that you just take a chance. The other thing too is is that. You know, there's been a lot of talk, and, and I know of a lot of people have maybe, maybe some of your speakers earlier or whatever say, and have been saying that, you know, you can do a lot of that here. You can, you can make your own kind of career here in the video games and or in the film industry as a visual effects artist or some kind of artist. Um, <coughs> nowadays, I tend to kind of agree that you can do that if you want to stay kind of independent and small, but... Um, and I'm not saying it would end up in just being a small company, but I'm saying take a risk, take a chance on going out and going out to Los Angeles or New York, San Francisco, and picking those guys' brains and working in the bigger companies so you can get a little bit of experience and a little bit of more knowledge and understanding and, and contacts out of these larger companies. Um, it gives you a lot more opportunities, but cause also there's a lot more for you to choose and where you want to work and who you want to work with. You know, you can, like I said, if you don't work in the, video, in the video game industry, then you can cross over and go into the film industry and there's a ton of work. Uh, trust me, there's a ton of work and it's getting even bigger. Um, uh, I've, for me, in my career, 22 years, uh, I've lived, uh, I don't know, I think 16 different places I've lived in. Singapore, I've lived in China, I've lived in uh, San Francisco, working for Industrial Light and Magic. Um, I've worked uh, in Hollywood and lived in Hollywood. I had a home in Hollywood, worked in New York, and now Atlanta. Atlanta, by the way, is right now the <laughs> biggest, uh, uh, the work, hello, it just died. <laughs> I think maybe you can still hear me, right? Okay. So uh, Atlanta is like the biggest hub right now for, for film and the entertainment industry period because of their tax incentives. Uh, last year, the film industry alone just spent $7.2 billion in Atlanta. Um, the, uh, this year, it looks like we're going to spend about 10 to $12 billion um, in, in Atlanta. So. If you think about getting into that and you want to be a visual effects artist, then it's probably one of the, one of the if you don't want to move out to L.A., you don't want to move to New York or Vancouver or Toronto uh, or Weta out in uh, New Zealand, then you could probably try, you know, your foot in, in um, Atlanta, at least if you want to try to. We, um, in Atlanta right now, we're the biggest visual effects company. We have 75 people working for us. Um, and so uh, we're always, you know, we're always looking for, for people. Uh, and but I mean, you know, the other things you could do is trying to be a grip or uh, you know lighting or something like that. They're always looking for that kind of people. If you want to learn how the film you know, how the film industry works, and literally like some of the <laughs> some of the film industry, I mean, um, you know, the parts of the film industry that uh, are actually getting into developing and, and not developing but actually producing video games also. You know, so uh, there's all that realm for you to look uh, to get into. Um, so I highly suggest that you know, if if you want to stay here, then that's fine, that's cool. Um, but if you want to kind of open and expand a little bit more opportunities for yourself, I highly suggest um, 
uh, you know, going to a city where there's a larger company like Activision is in Santa Monica, and they're all over the place. Um, and then come back here and open up your video game company. And, you know, that was one of my, one of my goals was when I, caught, when I came here, or when I left West Virginia, one of the goals I had was, you know, I would stay in Hollywood for a little bit, I would go up, I would climb the ladder, and once I got to a certain point, you know, I'd open up my own production company, come back to West Virginia and start employing people and teaching people and showing people just how to, how to work in the film industry um, and, and creating my own content and that kind of thing. I haven't got to that point yet, but, you know, it's close. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things that you should actually kind of, um, uh, kind of, kind of put in there. Um, I mean, how many, everybody in here video games, I, I'm all, I guess, video, want to be video game developers? Yeah. Artists? Okay. Um, anybody have any interest in visual effects now? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, $7 an hour. No, I'm kidding. Um, um, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, let me see, um, how much time do I have left here? Are we good? 15, 15 minutes, okay. Um, do we want to do a Q&A or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if I feel, if I'm kind of rambling and kind of getting off track here, but I'm really seriously, my brain's not working today. Um, you know, guys, you can ask me, if you, you guys got any questions, or uh, you want to ask me anything, just ask me. I'm full, yeah. Most people, that's not on either. I mean, it, it is, but it's is not it? on. Is it? Oh, <laughs> all right. So when, when most people consider VFX or think of VFX, like yeah. to me that, that turns into like doing the like particle effects and explosions and all of that stuff, but you're saying that it sort of covers, like it's a lot more than oh. just that, right? Because I'm into environment art, like that's what I enjoy doing. Right. But I, I think most of the time when you think of VFX, right, it's just the sort of, particle effects and explosions. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, visual effects itself. I want to run some of the demo reels. I don't want to, I want to go ahead and, can we kind of just maybe lower the lights? We can't lower them, can we? Yeah, okay. Um, no, uh, the visual effects is, I mean, visual effects on one film can have about 300 to up to 3,000 people. All right, so it, there's a lot of individu individual parts that go to visual effects shots. I mean, this shot, for example, is like, I mean, not only did we have to have a compositor, all right, that's one person. We had to have somebody create the particles. That's a particle generator or particle uh, uh, simulations, um, fluid simulations. We have people who do, and that's all they do. And, you know, they, we all have people who do lighting, shadowing. Uh, we have people do textures. Um, so. I mean, for one film, you know, it takes probably 300 people on a, on a minimum. Um, and it's spread over, I mean, if one company like Industrial Light and Magic, you know, when I worked there, uh, and I worked there on Pirates 1, 2, and 3, and, and Transformers, um, but when I worked there, um, you know, uh, it's a factory, so get used to that. I mean, if you like to do everything, if you like to do from A to Z, on your on your work, um, you are going to find some smaller companies that are like that, but the other companies um, like Industrial Light and Magic, they are just f full on factories. And so they'll give you one job to do, and that's your job. If it's to roto, or if it's to paint, if it's to create particles, that's all you do all day long. You know, you get paid good money, but that's what you do. So you might get bored with it. But, um, you know, and then there's the guys who, you know, in the 3D department, they basically, they're building all the models or, you know, your, um, um, I call it boning, that's what they used to call it, but, you know, putting in the skeletons and stuff, you know, rigging, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of host of people, there's all kinds of host of jobs, and it's not limited to just one thing at all. Um, I mean, that was, yeah, some of this actually was, created with Unreal Engine, actually. And this is for librarians, um, TV show called Librarians on TNT. It's not on anymore, so you'll have to get it. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah, what, sorry. What other uh, type of software do you use to develop those like fluid simulations and particle simulations? 
Um, wow, it's, I mean, like, we do use the Unreal Engine for certain things. Um, there's Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max, uh, we're using a lot of that um, for mainly particle generation, just because it seems like it's, it's kind of it's good for that. I don't know, I like it. Um, in Photoshop, um, <coughs> Photoshop, uh, uh, and then also uh, for compositing, we use um, uh, Nuke and uh, Flame, Flare, Flint, um, and then also um, Blackmagic's uh, uh, Fusion. So, um, and if, you know, if, if anything, at least, you know, if you don't know what these are, at least kind of put yourself out there and, and kind of learn this other software, because that's one of the things about getting a job in in the film industry is, is the more you know, uh, then you're, you have a higher chance of getting hired, you know, a better chance of getting hired, the more you know, because anymore now, they're not just hiring people for just one specific job, they're hiring somebody who can do all jobs across the board. So if you can texture, light, and uh, do particles, um, whatever it may be, um, you know, they're, they're going to look at that and they're going to hire you. I mean, I've you know, I've I've been in the HR side of things and hiring people, and um, and I, I kind of lean toward people who know a little bit about everything, as opposed to just one thing because I'm gonna get more money out of them. <laughs> so, um, anybody else? Yes. Yeah. You mentioned. Um, melding the video game industry with the film industry. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering if there are any that you know of, um, anything in, in the works for bringing a video game to the film right now? I'm thinking Fallout 76 would be great. <laughs> um, do I know? No, I don't know, honestly. I, I mean, I'm working on Dolly Parton Theater right now. If that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> um, 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 but I'm also working on amazing stories, so. Yeah, but I, no, I, I, don't, I don't really honestly know. Um, yeah, I'm a little behind on that, uh, of knowing where they're going or what they're going to do, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, uh, that guy? Hey. Oh, dude, love your hair. Thank you. Um, just out of curiosity, what would you say is the most ambitious visual effects that you've done? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, that right there, actually. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, you can't hardly see it because of the lights, but this, uh, my claim to fame was uh, I got a nominated for British Academy Award and uh, two Visual Effects Society Awards for my work on Black Swan. I was the, uh, you know, I pretty much d oversaw the entire film. Um, and it may seem like that that's not, you know, uh, what, what, was it, what was it you said again? Uh, the most ambitious. ambitious? Yeah, this was it. Because the director is insane. I love you, Darren Aronofsky, if he's going to watch this, but I doubt it. But anyway, um, yeah, this, this was pretty much, I mean, seriously, I mean, I personally don't get in, I try to stay away from, it, originally I, I wanted to composite and work on uh, major tentpole films like, um, Star Wars and and uh, and uh, you know Star Wars and, and and you name it you know Transformers or whatever. But for me, what's m the most uh, rewarding is is working on films like this where I can make it all look real and you don't know that it's a visual effect and you wouldn't know it was a visual effect unless I showed you like now. Um, that's the most rewarding for me, right? And that, this was the most ambitious. Uh, I've worked on a lot of films. I've worked on all the Matrix films and all the, I've worked on Brad Pitt's Fury. What else have I worked on? I've worked on all kinds of stuff and um, uh, uh, major, major films. And this one really seriously was my, my favorite and the most ambitious. And yes, that's Natalie Portman. She did do some of it. Um, anybody else, question? Compositing? Yeah, I know what it means in Photoshop, but what does it mean in film? Well, it's pretty much taking layers and, and putting them all together, you know. And so, like this, I mean, uh, you know, for, for uh, this, I mean, we just composited her face, uh, Natalie's face over this, this uh, stand-in 
or actual ballerina, and then compositing the feathers on top, uh, you know, and then compositing all these other feathers that are growing, and, the, and uh, these CG feathers, once we composite those, and you can tell that the black levels don't match this, so we, then we match that, so that's compositing, yeah. It's finishing, it's putting, we're the last part of the whole process. We basically were the ones who make it look great. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah. Um, you mentioned how it take it took like weeks for uh, one scene of like a minute to like <coughs> compile and like render and all that. Yeah, yeah. How long would it take to like do that now with like the the scene from Black Swan? Um, well, Black Swan was done what what five six seven years ago. So for some of those for some of those. Uh, during that time, I think the feathers themselves were taking about, I think, three and a half, four days to render. And then once we composite them, um, so we spent three months on that, on that one scene where she was spinning. That took three months to do. Okay. Yeah. And now, I mean, with GPUs, you know, the use of GPUs and uh, Redshift and, and that, that kind of software, uh, it would take probably about half the time. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's still a long, tedious process. It's not, I mean, we try to, we try to, you know, look at software that's going to give us the real time stuff. But um, at this point, the software is not staying up with the hardware, unfortunately. Anyway, um, yeah, anyone else? Anything? Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, honestly, um, it's really all about not a degree. I, I'm, trust me, this is, when you get out there and they're looking at your demo reels, they're looking at your, whatever, whatever you have to show them, they're not looking at your degrees, and I'm, I'm, you know, sorry to say that, but they're not. They're looking at what you have created on your own. Um, and, and listen, and, and trust me, don't, everyone, if, you're, if you guys are all in the same class, don't do the same thing. Just because it's a, it, it, just because it's a, um, you know, there's something out there that they want you to do or, or, or it's a, um, a tutorial or something like that, don't do it. Do something original. Do something on your own. And that itself is going to show um, me, people like me when I go to looking at your demo reel that you've got something original, you've got something that you uh, have come up with on your own. Uh, because once we start seeing these demo reels, I can tell you right now, once we start seeing demo reels and that kind of thing uh, flooding my desk, um, if they, they all start looking repetitive and the same, we almost um, immediately go, oh, this must have been some kind of class tutorial or something that they, they've told you to do. You can do that, but just add a little bit of your own stuff to it, you know, um, and make it original. Uh, I mean, you know, we always look for the highest quality um, and uh, the, the one individual with the biggest promise of, of being able to create that highest quality. Uh, because now, my films that, you know, that I'm working on now, um, we're shooting in 6K, you know, so, uh, you know, we're getting up there. Yeah, I worked on a couple of Muppet movies and I love it. <laughs> That's my most ambitious. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, anybody else? Yeah? I just I want to make sure uh, that I got right what you said and reiterate. We co commonly tell our students, especially in the animation and gaming program, that yeah. um, if you want to do it, you better love it and you better want to do it when you leave the classroom and you want to do it because it's not an assignment. And yeah. at the end, we tell them, put together a portfolio because people are going to judge you on that. They, they may not know who Mount West is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let, let, let alone in the state or outside the state. It's yeah. about what you do. So I just want to, I just want to make sure I, I hear you say on tape as a professional <laughs> that, that we are not crazy in telling our students that their portfolio, their work, shows as much if not more than the degree where they went um yeah exactly um yeah exactly um 
I, I mean, that's, that's a perfect exactly. I mean, example. I mean, you gotta be creative. You gotta do your own thing. Oh, that was Walking Dead. I thought it was a little bit longer than that. Um, so uh, yes, it was last season. Um, so yeah, I, I, absolutely. When when we look for your your um, portfolios and we look through that, we want to, we want to see as much original stuff as possible. Um, and you really seriously should strive at that. Um, you know. I mean, I really seriously agree with that. When you get out of here and you go home, uh, and if your first thought is to go out and party or go out and, and, and do something you know, other, then I would say <laughs> it's probably not your first love. It's gotta be something you absolutely love. I mean, I spent, in my 22 years, I would go to work and I work 12 hours a day. And sometimes if I'm on like Black Swan, I work six days a week for probably about 16 hours a day uh, for um, I think about uh, six and a half months, seven months, nonstop, you know, Sunday off, that was it. And um, so you have to be absolutely focused and dedicated and willing to do this. I mean, yeah, you, you can get paid a lot of good money and you get a lot of overtime, and that, but that should not ever enter your mind about the money and that. You should just concentrate on what you want to create and what you're interested in and what you, where you want to be with your career because if it's not something you absolutely love, then you're going to hate this industry. You're going to hate it like any other job because the demands are high, the stress levels are high, the, uh, the, the amount of hours you put in are extremely high. Um, and um, if you're sick, nobody gives a shit. Sorry, that's just the way it is. <laughs> nobody cares. I mean, I was working on, uh, what was I working on? Uh, I was working on some film, big film, big tentpole film for the Wachowski brothers. And, and we all got flu, the flu. You know, it was a room, uh, one of the rooms, this was just one of the rooms out of uh, about 700 people. And we all got the flu and we we're all sick. And we all, one of my buddies, he tried to call in sick. I, I went ahead and drove in and kept going in even as I had the flu, sitting at my desk, typing away, um, drinking fluids. Um, they, about half the guys didn't show up and they all called in sick. Well, they sent limos to get them and bring them to work. And I'm not kidding. They, they sent them and they got them and brought them to work. And they said, do you need your laundry done? And they were like, yeah, we do. And they're like, okay, bring your laundry. And then they did the laundry for us. That was how much, you know, I mean, that's how much they want you to be there and they expect you to be there. And if you're not, and listen, here's another thing I want to say uh, before we get really, I'm sorry, man, I'm jumping around here. But, um, you know, here's one thing I want to say is that um, uh, yeah, Hollywood is very small. Trust me, it's freaking small. I've worked with over 20, over this 20 plus years of my, of my uh, working in this industry, um, I have ran into at least one person I've worked with in every place I've ever been, okay, uh, even in China. And so this industry is like super small. So whatever you do, make sure that you, make sure you're always carrying a lot of chapstick because you're going to be kissing a lot of butt. And <laughs> literally, you got to make sure that you're always patting everybody on the back and you're smiling and everything because you don't want to burn any bridges. Because as soon as you burn that bridge, it's it's a small world and people know and you will have a hard time getting a job or a decent job. You may be getting jobs, but it'll be in a smaller community or a smaller venue or, or something you really don't want to work on. So just always, just keep that in mind. I know that's like ridiculous, but trust me, it's politics. Um, yeah, anybody else? Question? Compare nursing with what you do now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to wipe anybody's butt. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Nursing to this, oh God. This is much more rewarding. And I get to see the world, and I get to work with some amazing, incredible, and talented, and incredible people, which and I'm not saying that there's not incredibly talented people in the, in the hospital, but when you work in a hospital, it's, it's pretty much you, you are, you know, I think in the hospital for me, it was like, I, I thought it was going to be much more rewarding because people come in and go out, but not a lot of people come in, a lot of people come in and not a lot of people leave, you know, especially depending on what department you're working in. Um, and you keep, you know, so it's, 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 you know, for me, it's like 
that was much more depressing. Um, this, at least when the uh, director rips your butt and calls you, tells you your work sucks, um, you can always go back and when you get an award and say, yeah, bite me. <laughs> you know, so. Yep, okay. Else? Anybody else? Quick? All right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thanks. 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 Oh, thank you. Okay. So, uh,